Hey folks, this is Paul from Easy Acres Homestead. I hope you all have been well. This is my summer of 2023 off-grid update. One thing I'm always doing is cutting this mountain mahogany. Uh, for one, it makes excellent firewood, but uh, another reason I cut a lot of it is to get rid of it as a potential wildfire fuel, of which we've had a couple wildfires in my area this summer already. I'm using my Korean jjigae to uh, move some of it from the top of my property down to my uh, wood pile and uh, get it split and stacked and uh, set up for this fall and this winter. It's real important to me to get uh, ahead of the uh, cold weather and get this wood uh, set up. So I'm already kind of ahead of the game, but you know, as uh, summer wears on, I certainly will be collecting a lot more wood and doing a whole lot of other stuff. It's been a real busy summer. Uh, come along and uh, hang out and uh, I'll show you what I've been up to. This is my uh, Hugel Culture cold frame and I tell you what, uh, for late winter and into spring and the, the majority of the summer, it's really kept me flush with salad greens. It's been excellent. I love just being able to go out there and uh, pick what I want and uh, you know fix myself a quick and easy meal. There I am watering my potato patch. I love this little pump sprayer for, you know, spot watering. And here's my dog, Maidu. She got to come get some, too. She loves flowing water. It's so odd. Uh, she doesn't really care for standing water. Oh, my gosh, she's so chubby. We're going to work some of that off of her, though. See what I mean? She chases me around on any kind of motorized conveyance for whatever reason. Now, me being in the high desert, uh, one of the strategies I use to conserve uh, water uh, for my crops is uh, lots of mulch. And a great source of free mulch around here is grass. So uh, some dewy mornings I'll go out and uh, cut some and then spread it out this here wheelbarrow and, uh, you know, let that moisture evaporate off of it before putting it on the plants. And it goes a long way towards keeping that that soil cool and uh, also staving off some of that evaporation in the harsh sunlight out here. Here's my corn. Unfortunately, it's damaged by a little bit of frost. We got a frost like well into June. Uh, all my greens were good, but my corn and my potatoes kind of suffered pretty good. As you can see, a lot of my potatoes died back pretty good. Uh, it was a real shame. Don't have a lot of control over the weather, but I do have the mountain god here, and uh, I go up and make offering every now and again. And I'm not the most spiritual uh, person in the world, but you know, you really can't argue with results. And uh, for me, anyway, this uh, late summer rainstorm, thunderstorm was just the perfect thing that I needed. I really love the high desert when it rains, it takes on a special color. And you know, it's just something about it. It's just not summer without a nice summer thunderstorm. This little contraption is my urine desalinator kind of device. Now what it does is it evaporates urine and wastewater and condensates on this plastic and goes into my corn and actually worked really well for me this season. Some of the heavier ponderosa trees that I fell last year, uh, I moved down to my property, or rather out in front of my cabin, so I can uh, start the process of turning these into boards and using them for uh, building materials. All I have at the moment is a chainsaw mill, but it works pretty good for me. These uh, poles I have to kind of process manually, and here I'm stripping some of the bark off of a, one of the fresher cut ones with a uh, draw knife. Unfortunately, it'd be a little while before I can actually use this to build. It's got to cure pretty good. Nice sharp machete takes care of that bark real well. And, and having that bark off goes a long way towards uh, allowing it to cure evenly and, you know, a lot more quickly. Another thing I noticed about when you keep the bark on is that insects will chew it up. So removing that bark is pretty critical towards uh, getting that wood into a state where I can actually use it. So I lucked out this year and I drew a deer tag for my area, which is fantastic. There is plenty of public land, thousands of acres available within walking distance of my property that I regularly walk quite a bit. Uh, in order to get my shooting skills with this here Hawken rifle uh, up to snuff, I decided to make my own rifle range. 
Uh, and what I decided to do was uh, kind of dig into the side of this hill on my property. I paced out like a good uh, 100 yard kind of range uh, with good line of sight. And uh, here I am just kind of digging out where I want to set the targets up. I'm going to dig pretty good into the hillside to give myself a, a nice berm. Now these big thick ponderosa logs are going to be kind of my backstop, but behind that I'm going to have alternating layers of uh, stone and soil and sod, and I even seeded it with some uh, crimson clover to kind of hold it all together. Now the sod that I cut from the front, I saved. I don't. You can kind of see it off to the right of uh, the logs there, but the reason why I did that is so I can return it back on top and. And that way I don't leave like a big ugly scar um, there from where I'm, where I'm digging. It's really important to me to have a safe place to shoot. Um, and the direction I'm shooting towards is uh, towards the National Forest where there's nobody around. I mean, I think my closest neighbor is about a mile away uh, from where I am. So uh, it's a pretty, pretty safe location to be, uh, you know, practicing a little marksmanship. Yeah, this layer of uh, stone and, and soil that I, that I put up behind the, uh, the backstop is, is about four, five, six feet out uh, in some areas behind it uh, just to catch any, you know, rounds that go through that wood. And once I had it up, there is nothing left to do but to give her a test run. One of the things I have to do a lot in the summertime is uh, transfer water, and this is my RV pump motorcycle battery setup. I actually got that pump out of a burnt out meth mobile uh, abandoned RV that I found in the woods. Uh, surprisingly, the pump was fine, uh, but it works really well towards uh, transferring to these uh, IBC totes at the top end of my property. I also scored an amazing deal on some solar panels through Facebook. It really pays to watch out uh, for those kind of ads and everything. I love summer nights listening to the coyotes. Usually pick up around dusk and midnight and again towards dawn. It's real cool. This year we had a bumper crop of these here uh, gooseberries. Uh, it was really cool. They, they just seem to pop up all over the place everywhere. And I'm pretty lucky I have quite a bit on my own property. Um, I would actually went out with a tin and uh, collected them on a couple of my walks. and. I've been experimenting with making it into a jam or some kind of preserve or something, but not having much success. So we'll try again next spring. There's my girls, there's my quails. They're happy because they got new sand. It's so funny how excited they get when they get uh, new sand to play in. Now, a lot of folks go with chickens and I totally understand it, man. You know, chickens are great, um, but I went with these quail because they use a lot less water and a lot less food. And, you know, they, they produce eggs for me. They're also much quieter than chickens, too. A lot of people don't realize that. Um, to be real honest with you, too, I don't need a ton of eggs. Uh, this is about a day, maybe two days worth of eggs, and that's about as much eggs as I want to eat in two days. So works out absolutely perfect for me. Quail have been one of the best things I've done on my homestead. So here I am getting started with a rather ambitious project. Um, I'm actually building a semi-subterranean, semi-circular pit house in front of my uh, standard stick cabin here. Uh, so this is me starting the process of digging it out. Um, that wood stove that you can see back there, a neighbor of mine gave to me. Um, and I'm going to be putting inside of the, uh, inside of the pit house to uh, give it heat. Yeah, I ran into stone pretty quickly down there, and you can see off to the right, I've been throwing the rocks up uh, just so I can use those to build with a little later. The main part of the pit house I dug to about four feet deep, and uh, it's been a process that I've been doing for about a month, uh, kind of widening this hole out and everything, but 
Uh, it's coming along okay. I got the stove in and kind of fitted it where I want to put it. And I'm going to bank up stone all around that and put a nice mantle. Uh, here's a little sketch that I did after a couple beers. Maybe give you an idea what I'm kind of going for. But um, up the road in the National Forest, there's a nice quarry where I was able to get some of this nice flat uh, basalt flagstone. That's going to be end up being the floor and the walls. I can't wait. So I managed to score a bunch of these pallets uh, when I went to town and, uh, you know, knocked them together to make myself a, you know, real quick and dirty little storage shed. I've, I've kind of needed something like this and, 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 you know, it was great to throw together for basically for free and have a nice place to store my stuff. One of the things about being off grid is your stuff is just everywhere if you have nowhere to put it. It's kind of a pain. Bird feeder has been real busy and I love it. On my walks, I find these uh, obsidian flakes quite a bit. I've never found a point, but I always keep an eye out. My dog Maidu and I, about once or twice a day, we'll go for a good long walk, and what's real cool is sometimes my cat, Mr. Monster, comes and joins us. Sometimes. Usually he likes to just kind of chill out at the homestead and keep an eye on everything. So stinking cute, man. Pixar gotta make a movie about us. I am extremely cognizant that I'm very privileged that I can just walk outside my door and I'm in the National Forest, man, surrounded by some of the finest country on this uh, planet. But, you know, along with that uh, solitude, sometimes can come loneliness and, uh, you know, I'll be real with y'all. I've had some health issues lately, but uh, I've been seeking help and I've been moving forward and, and uh, you know, doing, doing little things like splitting wood it's just such an such an amazing thing for me it allows me to be extremely present and extremely grounded and just very zen and uh, also very self-aware that this is my winter's heat that i'm putting up you know it's not some silly task given me by some employer to benefit mostly them you know it's it's something for me and you know something that is easy and just absolutely wonderful for well, thanks so much, folks, for watching. I really appreciate it. I uh, hope that you watch the next couple videos I got coming out here real soon. In the meantime, from Easy Acres Homestead, y'all be well and be easy.